on the question of final passage. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I rise in support of House Bill 2050. We held a press event with respect to the bill, the Down Syndrome Protection Act, in the rotunda. A number of Down Syndrome individuals were present with us. Karen Gaffney, who has received an honorary PhD, was our keynote speaker. I would like to actually take verbatim some of her remarks. It's okay. I know I'm different than you. I look differently. I talk differently. I walk differently. I don't hear as well as most of you do, and I don't see as well either. And sometimes it takes me longer to learn things. She also made this point, but I can swim longer and farther than anyone in this room. She swam, swam the English Channel, amongst other great swims. She was on to say this, those of us with Down syndrome and our families face a very difficult future. We face a possibility of wiping out all of the tremendous progress we have made. Just as we are making so much progress, a whole industry has grown up focused on prenatal screening. Screening that would end our lives before we take our first breath. Now that you can test for Down syndrome before birth, there are many experts in the medical community that say this extra chromosome we carry around is not compatible with life. Not compatible with life, she asked. After everything we have done, I would say we are more than compatible. We are what life is all about. Our lives are worth living and our lives are worth learning about. This is an existential question put forth before good people, policymakers elected to address these issues. I hear the value judgments in some of the earlier remarks. What is a good life? What is not a good life? Karen Gaffney certainly understood her life to be a good life and understood that the mere existence of that life was wondrous. I think, I think sometimes, oh my goodness, what if my parents for some reason didn't think I was good enough as an unborn child? I was somehow not perfect enough as a human being. Right now, you can test for Down syndrome. And it has become the reason that some abortion providers suggest you probably don't want to have that child. Who is the victim here, not just not just the unborn child with Down syndrome, but maybe that mom who's feeling vulnerable and pressured and who might have come to love that child. Now, what is Down syndrome? In every cell in the human body, there's a nucleus where genetic material is stored in those genes. And genes carry the codes responsible for all of our inherited traits. Typically, the nucleus of the, each cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, half of which are inherited from each parent. A Down syndrome occurs when an individual has a full or partial extra co copy of chromosome 21. The testing does not allow for somebody to fix that. The testing is being used to just 
eradicate or eliminate that person, and that is that person. That person with that extra copy of chromosome 21 is that person. Just like I am the person who I am, or you are the person who you are. None of us perfect. None of us without our own disability of some sort, given a Vogue magazine type of a world. A mother wrote this. She considered herself to be quote unquote pro-choice until she had the choice of carrying her son with Down syndrome. And these are her words. In support, in support of the Down Syndrome Protection Act, as a mother to a 12-year-old son prenatally diagnosed with Down syndrome, I proudly defend the value of his life as equal to any other. As a pro-choice supporter, it became difficult for me to assert the absolute worth of that life while simultaneously conceding that prospective parents should decide if that life was worthy of being their child. The cognitive dissonance became too great to defend. Either Down syndrome is a life worth living or it isn't. One look at my son's joyous face confirms without question that his is a large, beautiful life that is more fulfilling than most. Opponents to this legislation attempt to deny that this is a disability rights law. I disagree. An argument is made that more disability services are needed. The way to solve that need isn't for people with Down syndrome to be, not be born at all. In fact, a true disability advocate would support both the protection of people with Down syndrome at diagnosis and throughout their lifetime. Why not entertain the possibility that the parents will learn and love compassion unlike any they've experienced from raising this child? And further, adoption has been left out of the conversation completely. I was fortunate that my doctor informed me about the registry of families waiting to adopt a baby specifically with Down syndrome. Not one or two waiting families, but 150. I think it's important also to think back to 1992. It was a seminal year in some of the discussion with respect to the pro-life movement. A Democratic governor, Governor Casey of Pennsylvania, was not able to speak at a particular convention. Shortly thereafter, an ad was taken out, a long ad, it was really a statement, as a full-page advertisement in the New York Times in July of 1992, around that time frame. And it said that those that signed it, including Governor Casey, a Democrat, including Governor Kerry, a Democrat from New York, including Sergeant Shriver and Eunice Kennedy Shriver, who founded Special Olympics, Democrats, and this is what they said about themselves. We are public officials, medical professions, scholars, feminists. We are liberals and conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, independents, Catholics, Jews, Protestants, and agnostics. And we have sought to reflect carefully on the abortion controversy. We are making our reflections public in the hope that they will help all Americans cut through the static of the sound bites and discuss the linked questions of abortion, human dignity, and American freedom with the moral seriousness demanded of citizens of a democratic republic, and that includes its representative body like us. The abortion issue raises the most fundamental questions of justice, questions that cannot be avoided and that cannot be resolved by judicial fiat. Who belongs to the community of the commonly protected? Whose rights will we acknowledge? 
Whose dignity will we respect? From whose well-being will we as a people assume responsibility? It goes on. Without a doubt, this section is called a human life, including the baby, the unborn baby diagnosed with Down syndrome. Those who approve of our current abortion regime sometimes claim that the child in the womb is simply an undifferentiated mass of tissue, an appendage to a woman's body. But modern embryology and fetology, this is 1992, have exploded such pseudoscience. Today, the sonogram has given us a veritable window into the womb and has enabled us to observe in detail the complex life of the child prior to birth. From the beginning, and this is so crucial to the discussion in front of us today, from the beginning, each human embryo has its own unique genetic identity. Three and a half weeks after conception, its heart starts beating, and at six weeks, brain activity can be detected. And at the end of two months, the limbs, fingers, and toes are complete. By three months, the baby is quite active, forming fists, bending arms, and curling toes. Unfortunately, advocates of unrestricted abortion do not want the public to focus on these undeniable facts of fetal development, but the facts cannot be ignored. In the end, abortion is a violent act, not against potential life, but against a living, growing human being, a life with potential. Yes, this is one small step. It's a step because science has allowed people to say, maybe you shouldn't have a child with Down syndrome. My good friend from Lancaster County made clear that in budget-related bills, we've increased and continue to increase funding for individuals with disabilities, including those with Down syndrome, record levels, community service, for in-house in services, well over $3 billion in state and federal money comes through our budget. $3 billion. Those with respect to in-state centers or into private centers. Those in community-based group homes. In education, we will once again for the eighth straight year, under both Governors Corbett and Wolf, have increased special education funding, well over a billion dollars annually. And our Medicaid assistance, both fee-for-service and capitation, absolutely covers health care provision with respect to individuals with disability. This body has been a champion of, the, of those levels of funding. And we will have robust discussions in the coming months with respect to how we prioritize those dollars. It is not an either or, folks. Again, this is an existential question. Who amongst us gets to decide that the dignity of that child, that unborn child with Down syndrome, isn't the first level of protection for individuals with disabilities. I would urge a yes vote.